Welcome back to Guitar Search Saturdays. This is a little bit of a lost episode. I shot this a couple of years back on a trip to Sarasota, Florida at Guitar Center. This was one of those episodes that <laughs> didn't quite come up as well as I would have hoped as it was a little bit of an undercover episode. Back when I first started this series, I wasn't sure if shops would understand what it was I was doing and sharing with my audience. So I used to shoot a lot of the videos undercover. It's only in the last 25 or so that I've started doing them with full knowledge of the shop. This wasn't one of those episodes. So what you're about to see is the best footage from this little walkthrough. I've taken out a lot of the stuff that will make you seasick, so hopefully this is still enjoyable. While I was in Sarasota a few years back, I came across this guitar center by accident. It's a really great store. I know guitar center is like the big chain brand, but there's something really cool about being a foreigner and checking out such a large guitar shop with lots of great secondhand gear. That's one of the things that I really love. Let's go in and take a look. Here's what I consider to be one of the best tweed amplifiers of all time. This is the Eric Clapton Fender Tremolux. These are awesome. Dr. Rick had one of these and it's one of the punchiest little amplifiers that I've ever heard. While there's no reverb, it has one of the best lopsided tremolos you'll ever hear. Here we have the Fender DeVille 2x12. These are phenomenal amplifiers. I remember using one of these extensively for years. It's a big amplifier, but they absolutely pack a punch. They're super smooth. They got all the great tones and it's a beautiful pedal platform. This is the thing I love about Guitar Center. All of these guitars on the wall here are used, which means you can get an absolute deal on them. I wish more shops in Australia did this and they just don't. You go to a guitar store here, they're either primarily just used instruments or just new instruments. There's not a lot of shops that have a wall with this many used guitars, but also still selling lots and lots of new ones. So for me as a foreigner, this is really cool to see. One of the guitars that doesn't get enough recognition is the PV Predator range. So back in the 80s, the PV Predator range were made in the United States, and then they went offshore, and then I think between around 1990 and 2000, they were also made in the US. So you can get yourself a really great deal just by looking at the used market. If you want a USA-made guitar that's a little bit different, but still has that Strat or Telecaster styling about it, check out the PV Predators on the used market. Given that this one's only $80, I'm pretty sure it's not made in the US. One of the things I always joke about on the channel is the fact that every guitar center I go to, they either have a left-handed made in Mexico Telecaster or a Squire. <laughs> and in this case, it was the made in Mexico Telecaster. Spending a lot of time at Jerry's Lefty Guitars, just seeing this really made me laugh. I was like, man, come on, give me anything else. Just, just give me two guitars and one of them not be this guitar. One of the things I always find interesting about guitar centers is they have their guitars so high up. Like, how are you supposed to tell exactly what they are and how much they are when they're about 12 feet above your head? Man, it must suck having to restock these walls. At the time of visiting this shop in 2017, there was plenty of Dean and Ibanez instruments. So if you like your heavy metal, you're in for a treat. If you've been subscribed for a long time, you'll know I'm a big fan of the Bugera V5 Infinium amplifiers. I get a lot of questions about my thoughts on the entire range. I've actually tried a few of these in a live situation before, but haven't reviewed the entire collection. While I think these are really great sounding amplifiers and quite good value, I wish Bugera just went ahead and installed quality tubes, even if it cost a little bit more. Every one of these amplifiers I've tried at a shop or owned or played, they all need to be revalved because of those rattly cheap junk tubes that they put in the back. Once you do replace the valves and they don't rattle anymore, you get yourself a really great sounding amplifier.
Here we have the Vox AC4C1. These are pretty cool for a small amplifier. One of my favorite small amps from Vox has to be the Vox AC10. A lot of people will either love it or they won't, but I think value for money and just in terms of punch and tone, the AC10s, they sound fantastic. And having that 10 inch speaker just makes them that little bit lighter as well. And that's the AC10 sitting on its left. So as you can see, it's a fair bit bigger. There were plenty of great amplifiers at this shop, but nothing that we haven't seen before. So I thought we'd go check out the acoustic section. Strangely enough, while I get an opportunity to travel every few years, one of the things I never think about getting is a traveler guitar. I always felt like there'd be some sort of playing compromise when it came to a travel instrument, but these days that's not the case. This is the Traveler Escape Mark III acoustic electric guitar, which means you can play it acoustically or you can also plug it into a PA system. And it has a full 25 and a half inch scale, which means it's gonna feel great to play. If you wanna check out a video of my Travel electric guitar, I'll leave a link up in the cards and you can check that out. One of the things I've seen in a lot of the guitar sections of shops here in Melbourne, Australia over the last 10 years is they're all kind of copying what Guitar Center has. A dedicated room with lots of great acoustics thanks to the floorboards and thanks to the timber on the walls. It works, it sounds great, and it looks cool. This is a left-handed acoustic guitar from Martin and it's made in Mexico. It's part of the Custom X series and they come in at a really affordable price, $4.99. Now, being that it's made in Mexico, they can obviously save a few bucks. One of my favorite guitars of all time, which is a Taylor GS Mini, is also made in Mexico, and it's one of the best acoustics I've ever played. So if you get a chance to play either of these two, give them a go. It was right about that point where one of the staff members recognized me and asked for a selfie for Instagram, so I obliged and then I shut the camera off. I got chatting for a while and there wasn't really any other footage to add to this particular Guitar Search Saturday, so I ended up just stopping it and moving on. And that wraps up another Guitar Search Saturdays. Thanks for watching, my name's Shane. If this is the first episode you've seen of this, I'll leave a playlist in the cards and you can check out more episodes. The video quality has changed drastically over the last three years, so I encourage you to go check it out. It's a whole lot of fun checking out guitar shops from all around the world. Now that things are starting to open up here again in Melbourne, Australia, I'm going to start adding some more Guitar Search Saturdays to the rotation probably next month by the looks of things, but we'll see how we go. A massive thanks to everyone who supports Guitar Search Saturday, whether that's on Patreon or just watching and clicking like on YouTube. Thanks again, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.